Now let's talk about the column and struts. Now before we go into the discussion on these two things, let's first of all understand and define what is a strut. Well, strut is a member which is you know under the compression load. So it's a it's a member. It's a member under compression. You can have any kind of orientation uh, for a strut. It can be it, you know it can be vertical, horizontal, inclined. So as long as you have compressive load being uh, you know pressed upon uh, you know a member, it is always called a strut. Okay. Now if I make this strut vertical, it becomes a column. Right, so there are two kind of columns. You have long columns. Okay, now long columns are basically very very slender. Slender means thin. Right, long columns which are slender. Right, the major reason for the failure of a long and a slender column is buckling. So this is basically a result of bending. Right, so buckling is a consequence of bending of the material. Right, and it is normally, you know, what happens in a very long column. It will fail via buckling. How? So if you look at a column like this, it's very, very long. So if you put load onto this column, it will try to buckle like this. It will bend. It will bend like this. So this is what we call buckling. If you have a short column, if you have a short column, then this kind of a column, it will fail via crushing. So you crush it out. They, they, they don't bend. The short columns will not bend appreciably, but they will first, uh, you know, fail via crushing only. So there is no need uh, for them to be bent. Right. Now, if you talk about the resistance of a material to bending, it is a function of its flexural rigidity. Flexural rigidity. Okay, that is EI. So this is what defines the resist the resistance of a material to bending. Okay. Now, uh, if I talk about this I over here, I is nothing but the moment of inertia which can be written as A into K square where K is again defined as the radius of gyration radius of gyration okay so if you take any cross section a cross section will have two axes and for those two axes you will have two moment of inertia okay so in order to define whether a column is a long column or a short column we need to now look at the two moment of inertia okay so you have two axes which gives you two moment of inertia out of these one will be larger in value and the other one would be uh, i would say lesser in value okay so i will choose the lesser of the moment of inertia about a particular axis and I will design the entire column according to this moment of inertia because this will provide you with the least amount of resistance to bending. If, if you design your column as per the larger value of moment of inertia, your uh, column will 200% fail. But if you design as per this, you are going to be safe. Okay, so that is why we take this. So as per the lesser uh, moment of inertia, uh, we will now look at a ratio which we call a slenderness ratio a slenderness ratio which is equal to the length by radius of gyration so this will define whether your column lies in the range of long columns or it lies in the range of short columns okay so this is what we understand by columns and struts. This is the basic introduction uh, of the topic. Now, we will be majorly discussing about the buckling failure. Okay, because uh, the crushing failure is uh, not we, what we are going to talk about. This is not that important to discuss about. This is 
much more important to discuss about and the mathematical theory which given which governs the buckling load the load at which the buckling actually takes place and your column material fails is called buckling load that is governed by a theory which was given by Euler so Euler column theory is what we are going to talk about in uh, this particular video series so in the next video onwards we look at some end conditions of these columns okay so for every kind of end condition you will have a very uh, you know uh, different value of buckling load depending on that end condition which will be derived with the help of the Euler theory so now let's move on to the next video and derive a mathematical relation for the very first end condition for columns